Hi, I'm Anthony Ha with uh, TechCrunch, and I am here with the Crown Prince and Princess of Norway. Um, so what did the Crown Prince and Princess think of the uh, Oculus Rift helmet? That was uh, pretty awesome, actually. Uh, <laughs> it was a, the video of a base jumper, and you could turn your head and look around uh, while he was flying in his wingsuit. Uh, his name is Jukke, and uh, he's um, pretty accomplished as a base jumper. Uh, so it was fantastic to, to, to see that. Uh, it's a much more sort of real experience, I guess, than just watching a flat screen. So I, I hope the, uh, the Crown Prince will not think it's impertinent if I say that we were talking about how uh, he was one of the few people who can look cool wearing one of those helmets. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so so what, um, what are some of the, uh, the technologies that, that the Crown Prince and Princess are, are personally excited about? Well, I think that uh, we saw two examples here today uh, where Norwegian companies uh, are uh, having breakthrough ideas and really want to put them out to, to life. And this house, uh, I was here for the opening 18 months ago, and now more than 1,000 people have used it. Uh, more than 25 countries use it on a regular, companies use it on a regular basis. Um, so it's great to come here and, and see people, everything from, from Bipper that we have here uh, working on, on, on safety um, applications for um, uh, s uh, smartphones uh, to the type of uh, 360 video um, technology that, uh, that we've seen. So there's, there's a whole variety of different ideas and different companies. Very exciting. So um, in terms of you know, bringing this kind of innovation to Norway, which certainly has successful technology companies already, um, are there specific assets uh, that, that Norway can sort of take advantage to build you know, the sort of cliche of the Silicon Valley of Norway? Um, well, I think that it's a um, process in, um, that we are focused on constantly and trying to uh, foster um, an uh, innovative uh, way of culture of innovation in Norway. Uh, there is uh, innovation in Norway is working on that. There's uh, private initiatives uh, such as MESH and also at the universities uh, in Trondheim, for instance, the, the tech university is there. Uh, so there's many things going on at the same time in parallel. And I, we see quite a few of the results here on this trip with all these young companies that are um, accompanying with us uh, here at the, with the, in the business delegation. Uh, so the, the last question is, uh, you know, there is, we are in this, uh, you know, in Silicon Valley, we have some very cool uh, Norwegian companies here. Um, what do you, what kind of um, relationship would, would the Crown Prince and Princess like to see between Silicon Valley and, and Norway? I think it's important that we have this house as a starting point, but obviously there we also have some examples of companies that have been doing really uh, uh, good here um, before this house came, and I think those people have also been very willing to help other companies uh, succeed in, this, in the valley, and I think that's important that you have some companies that have done well and are willing to take on a sort of mentoring role for the other companies coming after. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, this is Anthony Ha with TechCrunch, and I am here with uh, Hans from uh, Elliptic Labs. And uh, so, what is Elliptic Labs? Uh, Elliptic Labs is a Norwegian company that is uh, developing solutions for touchless interaction based on ultrasound. And uh, so, what do you think are the, the use cases where somebody is going to want to have that kind of interaction? Uh, of course, there are the, uh, the use cases where you, you can't reach the screen or uh, maybe your hands are, are dirty or wet and you don't want to touch the screen. But there are also uh, use cases where you can just uh, do things in a more efficient way when you, when you don't have to touch the screen. Right. So I think one of the things we were talking about earlier was you know, leap, leap motion, something that a lot of people uh, are talking about right now in terms of gesture-based controls. But one of the things you were saying is that that's not necessarily something that's very suited for kind of a tablet experience, right? Uh, exactly. So. Uh, uh, Leap Motion, uh, their primary uh, platform would probably be a laptop where they can integrate the cameras in, in the bezel, in the keyboard bezel uh, to get like to get the right perspective, viewing perspective of the hand. So uh, for a smartphone or for an, and for a tablet, that's much more challenging. Great. Well, let's take a look at the, uh, at the actual technology. Absolutely. Here you see the capability to, uh, to track uh, my hand in three dimensions. And you see here that the, uh, the size of the ball is proportional to the distance to the screen. And uh, this technology is based on ultrasound, which um, enables a very wide field, of, uh, wide field of view. So it can see my hand all the way to the screen. And it can even see my hand below the screen, as you see here, and on the side of the screen. 
on the top of the screen. And um, since the system can, uh, can do this, it, we can use this uh, area on the side of the screen for gestures. So if you see here that I can pull in something from the side to change application. Uh, here you see uh, sc scrolling in a web page. And change the page. Uh, here I can choose this, uh, a, a tile. Great, this looks really cool. Um, and, and so what, I know you're sort of, you know, in talks right now in terms of integrating with devices. In the best case scenario, what do you think, when do you think consumers might actually be able to use this technology? Uh, I, there's a high probability that we're going to see this out in the market in 2014. Great, well I look forward to it. Thank you so much for your time.